Good morning, everybody. Today's demo is how to start creating your um, relief of your animal on your clay slab. Um, I decided to do things a little different this year. Instead of making everyone do a square tile, I thought it might be fun to kind of open up the decorative um, decorative possibilities and not necessarily make a square. Um, if you want to make your tile a square or a rectangle, um, and right now it looks kind of like mine, it's easy enough to do with the T-squares that are um, next to where we kept our bottles for the bottle project. Um, and you can just make that kind of parameter. But um, for everyone else, I would suggest that you just start working in the middle of your, your clay slab. First step, today's step, what we're going to do is we're going to add a blob of clay onto our clay slab. And um, you want to grab a piece of clay that's about the size of your fist, have a toothbrush with your next door neighbor, or this is like a five-prong scratchy tool. This is going to be helpful to us when we scratch and attach. This is called a settling knife, and it's used specifically for ceramics, not for anything else. And it's F-E-T-T-L-I-N-G, settling knife. And this is self-explanatory needle tool, basically a needle and a stick. It's pretty easy. We're going to keep our um, clay slab on our damp paper towel and um, keep our paper towel on, on the newspaper. So as far as the block of wood, you know, when you're working at your desk, you don't need to keep it on the block of wood. I do suggest when you're done working that um, you, you put your clay tile back on the block of wood um, with a redampened paper towel in between the wood and the tile just to keep your tile from drying out. Um, your block of wood may warp a little bit over the weekend, but I wouldn't worry about that too much um, because there's more where that came from. I could always um, throw out your warped block of wood and get another block of wood, and it's okay. So I'm not worried about what happens to our wood. Um, if you are out for quite a bit of time, multiple days, um, a long weekend or like something like that, what can happen is you can actually get mold on your board. In that case, we would just, uh, if it's not like a surface situation that I could wash off, wash off myself, I would just chuck your board. Don't uh, get too skeeved out. That's what happens if you don't open your bag in quite a few days and you have moisture in there, then yeah, that could possibly happen. But here we go. You will need to have your pictures with you. I decided to do this really cool snake um, with an open mouth. Um, and I kind of thought of a fun, creative idea. I might kind of use this as a plant pot and grow a seedling out that would represent like the tongue, you know? If you've seen a seedling plant, it's kind of like long and skinny, and I thought that might be fun and relate to my own personal artwork, um, which is planters. Um, so, and also this is probably the most challenging idea that I saw a student choose, and um, so I figured I would start with that. Okay, first thing you're going to do is grab your side view picture. If you have it, grab your side view. Um, you can use the edge of your desk or a pair of scissors to cut it away from your front view if you have it on the same page, so come up and do that if that's an issue. Um, and then you are going to fold your side view page in half where, and let me explain where you would fold it, where you want the clay to emerge from your flat surface of your tile. So, for instance, um, I want the whole mouth coming off, vertically off my tile. So, um, you wouldn't want to, if you have a skinny neck on, on your snake or if you have like a skinny part, keep in mind gravity. Clay is heavy. Um, you wouldn't want a 
stem or something skinny extending off the surface of your clay and then have a big ball of clay above that, it will just break and fall off. So um, you need to, your, the base of your sculpture needs to be supported, okay? And then the next thing you're going to do is take your toothbrush or your scratch tool and just really rough up, up the surface of your of your tile. Kind of like that. You don't have to work right to the edge because I would recommend that you leave a little bit of space in some areas, not in all. It's kind of fun if you have something like um, an elephant or something, a portrait with ears, if that sticks off the um, extends off the sides of the tile. That can actually look really fun. Um, so don't feel like you need to, everything needs to fit within the, um, the circumference of your tile. For instance, this is Joey Lupofito's tile from last semester. And look how just this frog and the leaves like extend off the sides. Don't feel like you need to work within your space. You can kind of like work, like extend off the ends, like with ears or feet or whatever. As long as, like I said before, it's not like a skinny, skinny frail section coming off that would snap off, you know? Alright, so I scratched the surface of my clay and now it's time for the fun part. I want to just make sure that the surface of my clay and the clay that I'm adding is similar wetness. If that's not a case, you might want to like come get some clay from me if you grabbed like a dry piece of clay by mistake or something. Um, if it's similar wetness, you don't need to add any slip or wet, muddy clay. It's only like after a couple of days of working with these when the surface that we're adding to is very dry that we actually need to add slip. So um, what I'm going to do is pound this into a similar shape of what I want to accomplish. This shape is an open mouth. I am not going to hollow out the mouth yet. So, what I'm going to do might be interesting to you. I am going to make, I'm going to pretend like the mouth, the void where the mouth is open is actually closed in my case. Yours is probably going to be a lot easier than this, which is why I'm demonstrating this. You want to clean up any seams with your thumb. And pound your clay into a shape. Maybe you're doing like a nose that's sticking off the surface of your tile. And in my case, do you see how the outline of the snake head here is a triangle? And here, I have a triangle. Do you see that? If I just tried to make, like build this with my hands really skinny like this, it would probably flop around. So what we're doing here, it's called subtractive sculpture. We're putting like a huge mass of clay on the surface of our tile and then we're going to be taking the clay off with loop tools and our fettling knives and stuff like that to carve the detail. The surface of my clay is flat so I'm making a little flat section here and now I'm going to take this or I should say and. Just scratch it with a sec for a second with your, um, where that connection is going to be on here with your um, toothbrush. And then we're adding even more texture by just dragging lightly. You know, hold your um, needle tool like a conductor. 
dragging lightly across the surface of your tile. There's a reason Velcro is textured. Do you ever think about that? Think about the texture with Velcro. There's huge loops and then there's soft material. And um, there's, if you look at Velcro closely, there's like different size texture in Velcro. The reason is because it's more likely to stick and hold. Clay, same thing. Think of it like Velcro. Most important part of this is that you are making an area where the scratch exceeds, watch this everybody, this is super important, the scratching area should exceed your connection. So this is a side view of my snake mouth. And it just looks like a blob. Pressure's off here, folks. <laughs> it literally just has to look like a blob. Okay. Now what we're going to do is if your connection is like mine, which is narrower than the top, you're going to coil it. You, chances are, I think the only person who even needs to coil this is the boy with the snake. So, and it's funny because there's a boy with a snake in both classes, so I think this is going to be perfect, and then you coil it. See that? Extra connection. Okay? And I am going to leave this for now and think about what I might possibly want to do with it. Um, I might want to make like um, a half kind of tube here and make this look like a coil of the snake going around the outside. But I don't really know. I haven't really decided. Um, I'm going to do something to it, um, but I just don't know what I'm going to do to it yet. So I'm going to take the weekend to kind of think about what I might want to do, like, creatively with that. Um, this is a technical assignment, so you're not on the rubric. There is nothing about creativity beyond what you're seeing. So the technical part is learning how to replicate these planes in space. And right now we just need clay in order to do that with. So, So that's it. Okay. At this point, I can just use my fingers to kind of push the clay around a little bit because I have a nice, steady base now to start sculpting. And now, um, I'm just going to show you really quick how to how to um, clean up. Once you've got that, um, and we do have we have like 15 minutes left, but I'm just going to show you how to clean up on video so everybody knows. Um, you're going to take your paper towel that was wet. And then I'll come around and help you guys. Okay. And then I wet a few other paper towels. And what you're going to do on your wooden board is put one damp paper towel on your board and then something in addition. You're going to put that on there. You are actually going to cover your sculpture with damp paper towels. Okay? So, just like this. That helps replace some of the moisture that we've re removed with our fingers and also ensures that over the weekend we're going to come back to a wet slab. Then it needs to be placed in a plastic bag. Oops, that one, see this? Not wet enough. You don't want it dripping.
definitely not dripping um, or you'll come back to mush. If you're at the sink and you squeeze your paper towel and there's liquid coming out of it, then that's not good. You want to squeeze it out and then make sure that there's no more drips coming out and then cover it. Grab your plastic bag. If your plastic bag has a hole in it, then you'll want a new plastic bag. And so check it all over. And if you cannot see your name, because we're still at the point where everybody sort of looks the same. You're going to put your name on it again. West period 2 or period 4. Of course the plastic has to be dry for that. I'm going to put period 4 because this is period 4 demo. Okay, and that's it. Thanks for watching.